In this unit, students will use their knowledge of multiplication and division to build an understanding of factors and multiples. It's important for students to see how factors and multiples are related. A factor is a number that is multiplied by another number to find a product. A multiple is a product of two numbers. A factor times a factor is a multiple. So 3 and 4 are both factors of 12. And 12 is a multiple of 3 and a multiple of 4. Now we know that 12 has other factors, 1, 2, 6, and 12. And 3 has many multiples, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and so on. Same with 4. Students should see that the difference between factors and multiples is factors divide a number into its parts, whereas multiples extend the pattern of skip counting by that number. Students will use an understanding of factors and multiples to solve real-world problems, as well as create equivalent fractions and write fractions in their simplest form in the later unit. Let's look at some of these real-world problems that students might encounter. Ashley is making a scrapbook of pictures from her summer vacation. She has 24 pictures from Baltimore and 32 pictures from New York City. She wants each page to have an equal number of pictures and all the pictures on that page to be from the same city. How many pictures can she put on each page? Well, we know from the problem that she has 24 pictures from Baltimore and 32 pictures from New York City. And she wants to divide them into equal groups of pictures on each page. The question is asking us how many pictures can she put on each page? So in our plan, we know that we're going to find the common factors of 24 and 32. Let's look at how students might solve this. Students could make a model using manipulatives. In this model, the green square tiles will represent the 24 pictures from Baltimore, and the blue square tiles will represent the 32 pictures from New York City. A student would start by dividing them into groups of two pictures on each page. You can see that two is a factor of both 24 and 32, so Ashley could have two pictures on each page. Students might then try to divide the pictures into groups of three pictures on each page. That works for the pictures from Baltimore because 3 is a factor of 24. However, it does not work for the pictures from New York City because 3 is not a factor from 32 and we have these two leftover pictures down here. So 3 is not a possible choice for the number of pictures she can put on each page. Students might then put the pictures into groups of 4 pictures on each page. 4 is a factor of both 24 and 32. Students would then use their manipulatives to put the pictures in groups of five, six, seven, and eight pictures on each page, which is the final common factor between the 24 and 32. So Ashley could have groups of two pictures on each page, four pictures on each page, or eight pictures on each page in her scrapbook. Another way students could solve this problem is to draw all the possible arrays for 24 and all the possible arrays for 32, and then choose the arrays that are the same. So in this case, again, Ashley could have two pictures on each page, four pictures on each page, or eight pictures on each page. Finally, students could just list the possible ways to make the number 24 and make the number 32 and circle the factors that they have in common. Let's look at another problem. Meredith and Jackie went shopping and spent the same amount of money. Meredith bought some toys for $6 each. Jackie bought some toys that cost $8 each. What is the least amount of money that they could have spent? Well, what do we know from the problem? We know that Meredith bought toys that cost $6 each and Jackie bought toys that cost $8 each and that the girls spent the same exact amount of money. We want to know what is the least amount of money that they could have spent. Now, let's think of a plan. We're going to have to list out how much money Meredith could have spent and how much money Jackie could have spent until we find the common multiple. One way students could do this is by skip counting on a number line. Let's start with Meredith. You can see one toy would cost $6, two toys is $12, three toys is $18, four toys is $24, and five toys is $30. Next, the student could add Jackie to the number line. One toy is $8, two toys is $16, three toys is $24. I could keep going, but we the question is asking, what is the least amount of money they could have spent? Both Meredith and Jackie landed on 24. 24 is a common multiple. Another way to solve this problem is students could list out the multiplication facts and then circle the one that they have in common. 
In this case, Meredith bought four toys for $6 to equal $24, and Jackie bought three toys for $8 to equal $24. Finally, students could just simply list the skip counting pattern of each multiple. Just like with multiplication and division, we want students to choose the strategy that is most efficient for them to solve. However, it is important for students to understand all of the strategies for finding factors and multiples so they are able to interpret another student's response. In this unit, students are also going to learn divisibility rules. The purpose of learning divisibility rules is so students could look at a number, such as 45, and tell right away if it is divisible by a number. Students should be able to recognize that if a number is divisible by a number, then that means that number is its factor. So if 32 is divisible by 2, that means 2 is a factor of 32. And that 32 is a multiple of 2. Finally, in this unit, students will learn prime and composite numbers. A prime number is a whole number with exactly two factors, one and itself. A composite number is a whole number that has more than two factors. You can see on this chart all of the circled numbers are the prime numbers that are less than 100. Students will use their divisibility rules and their knowledge of factors and multiples to determine if a number is prime. It is important for students to have a firm understanding of factors, multiples, prime and composite numbers, and those divisibility rules so in the next unit they're able to write equivalent fractions and tell if a fraction is written in its simplest form. Here are some questions to ask your child. How can you use arrays to find factors of a number? How can you use divisibility rules to check your answer or tell if a number is prime? Can a number be divisible by more than one, by more than one number? Explain. How can, you tell if a factor, how can you tell if a number is a factor of another number? And how are factors and multiples related? Here are some real world connections for factors and multiples. At the store, you can buy eggs in packs of six, packs of 12, and packs of 18. You could easily ask your student multiple questions or factor questions with these packages. Students also would be able to use factors and multiples to solve that age-old question of how many packs of hot dog buns and how many packs of hot dogs do I need to have the same number with no buns or no francs left over. And finally, students can practice their use of multiples using a calendar. If I have dance every fourth day of the month and gymnastics every seventh day of the month, which days of this month would I have both gymnastics and dance? Thanks for tuning in. As always, keep in communication with your child's teacher and check out these cool links for more information. See you next time.